I'm Lisa Papadimitrio. Thank you so much for having me as part of Springfield School Volunteers Read Aloud program. Today I'm going to share with you a part of a book that I wrote called A Tale of Highly Unusual Magic. This book is about two American girls, one of whom goes to visit her relatives in Pakistan in a city called Lahore uh, for part of the summer, and the other of whom goes to visit her aunt uh, who lives in a small town right near Houston, Texas, um, for part of the summer. When each girl uh, visits her relatives, they each find a blank book. When they open it uh, and they start to write in it, um, the book takes their story and makes it into a new story, uh, the book's story. And not only that, but the girl on the other side of the world can see what was written. And when she adds to it, the book adds more. And so there are actually three different stories going on. There's the story of Kai, who is the girl visiting her aunt in Texas, um, and what, what happens there. There's the story of Layla, uh, who the girl who's visiting her relatives in Lahore, and what happens to her. And then there's the story of what happened to the book and how it came to be this magical book and all three are interwoven. Um, uh, Houston, Texas is the city there where I grew up and Lahore, Pakistan is actually the city where my husband grew up. And this book is really about how people can be connected across time and across space. Um, and you never know how lives will intersect. So, but it's also fun. So, um, so this scene is uh, part of chapter three, the beginning of chapter three, and, uh, and it starts with Kai. Kai should not have gone to the Walgreens. Like I said, that was her second mistake. Oh, she still would have had an adventure writing in book, guaranteed it. But it might have been a smaller adventure. Oh, well, she went, so it wasn't. It was five long blocks to the Walgreens pharmacy. In the gutter, Kai saw a squashed frog that had dried to leather in the Texas heat. I like to call that road jerky. A thick breeze licked at her sweaty scalp. The lawns were patched with grass so dry and brown it looked like hay. Across the sidewalk, Kai's flip-flops slip, slip, slipped after her. She was the only pedestrian in sight. Everyone else was locked up tight in their cars, breathing nothing but air conditioning, like people who were used to serious heat and didn't want to put up a pointless fight. She paused at the stoplight and looked up the street to where the black ribbon of asphalt bled against the wavy edge of the sky. It was so hot that the tar patching the cracks in the road had melted and lay there soft and warm as candle wax. When the white letters lit up, she scurried across the intersection, wisely wary. That tar would have grabbed her flip-flop and ripped it right off her foot. Probably would have gotten run over by a Chevy Suburban, which would have made this into a very different kind of story much shorter. Kai scuttled across the parking lot and onto the wide sidewalk that bordered the strip mall. There it was, the Walgreens, the air-conditioned home of Dr. Pepper and Cheetos, heaven for the kind of girl who was never let out of the house by herself, which, let me tell you, is the kind of girl she was. She even considered buying two bags of Cheetos. That's how big a deal this adventure was to Kai. Two newspaper boxes stood sentry outside the double glass doors. A dog leash looped loose and limp around one. At the bottom, panting in the shadow of the strip mall's roof, lay an exhausted looking brown and white chihuahua. His tiny tongue rolled from the side of his mouth and his tan ribs rose and fell in quick time. Hey, cutie, Kai said, stooping to doggy level. You shouldn't pet strange dogs. Kai looked up. A girl with curly black hair and eight million freckles poked her head around the side of the stucco pillar. Didn't your mother ever teach you that? The girl asked. This chafed at Kai like a burlap backpack. 
First of all, her mother had told her that, but her mother never let her do anything. Second, this girl looked like one of the bunnies, those pretty girls at her school who always thought they knew everything, but really had brains like vacant parking lots. And third, this dog was tiny. He weighed about an ounce. How much damage could he do? Kai ignored the freckled girl and touched the tip of the dog's ear with a single finger. That chihuahua burst like a firecracker. He snarled and snapped at Kai, who screamed and fell backward onto her butt. The dog barked like it was fighting off a shark attack, and a woman in a moo-moo blasted out of the electronic door shouting, Taco! Taco! But Taco had already lurched to the end of his leash and clamped his jaws onto the hem of Kai's jeans. Get him off! Kai screamed. Taco! The woman shouted. Her giant blonde hair quivered with each screech. Taco! The freckle-faced girl walked over and grabbed the dog by the scruff of the neck. She gave him a good shake until he let it go. Then she handed him to the woman with the giant hair who said, Oh, Taco, you naughty baby, and nuzzled him adoringly. She turned to Kai and shouted, What are you pestering my dog for? Why did you leave your dangerous dog unattended? The freckled girl demanded. Taco needs a muzzle. My dad's a lawyer. You'll be lucky if we don't sue. I'll bet Taco's done this before, hasn't he? The woman with the giant hair huffed and walked off, cooing to Taco as he licked her neck. Kai stood up and silently watched the woman stuff herself into a small Honda. The dog rode shotgun. Then she turned to face the girl with the freckles. I'm Doodle, the girl said, and you're welcome. Kai, who had been just about to say thank you, was irritated again. Bunnies always had cutesy nicknames, and this one was no exception. Why doodle? Are you an artist or something? She demanded. I was born on the 4th of July. Kai frowned. Does that explain something? Doodle started humming Yankee Doodle Dandy. Kai had never heard anyone hum in a way that made it sound like duh, uh, 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 duh. Duh. Oh, Kai said, feeling even more irritated and stupid than before. Well, yeah, thanks for saving me from that chihuahua. Doodle smirked a little. She had a twitchy little mouth, and her smirks were rather comical. Everyone thought so, not just me. What's so funny? Do you think they have a card for that? In the drugstore. Thank you for saving me from that chihuahua with like a rose on it, everything written out in gold letters, all scripty, and a poem inside. <laughs> yeah, they probably sell a lot of them at this location anyway, Kai said. Well, I'll see you around. She turned toward the doors. The electronic eye sensed her movement and opened for her, blasting her with cold air. Hey. Doodle called after her. What's your name? For a second, Kai was tempted to pretend that she hadn't heard. Her mother always said she should never tell strangers her name. Then again, she thought she'd probably never see this girl again anyway, so who cared? Kai, she called a moment before the doors closed behind her. Doodle's funny, twitchy little mouth smiled at her through the glass. Kai didn't know what to think of that smile. Yet, but I was confident that she would figure it out.